Okay, this is a scene that I just stamped out um, using a couple images from um, my personal collection, one by Onion Arts, and um, let's see, where did my son go? Uh, Gumbo Graphics. I don't know, you'll see that later on. Oh, here it is. Um, and it's for a scenic stamp exchange of mine, but um, I didn't know what this was going to look like in the end, but um, stamping it out, my general idea was I wanted to stamp this little figure kind of submerged in water. I know I think it's kind of a, an evocative image to begin with. And I figured having it in water, you have this little fig finger kind of, you know, right here, would it be interesting where it was just barely touching the water. And I have uh, an image called um, Ripples. Uh, it's called Ripples Large. I don't know if you can get it to focus there, but um, and I just use the bottom portion of it. But I don't know, kind of a fun scene, and uh, you know, I wanted it just you know to, there to be a connection between where that uh, little finger touched the water, and it was really only up until the end I kind of figured out what this was going to be uh, thematically. You know, visually I kind of knew, but, um, you know, I had this little finger touching the water and there'd be kind of be the lit, illuminated area and kind of a trail of uh, the energy entering the body and, you know, where I've kind of lit um, stars and kind of made something glow before I just kind of did that on the uh, arm, kind of coming into the body and some areas on the spine I kind of, you know, illuminated... Uh, couple of those little dots down there. And uncharacteristic of me, I didn't really add a ton of, you know, highlights really anywhere up here. Maybe just a couple in the sun, but a little pigment ink around here, that's how it creates that softer glow, and a little bit of pigment ink here and there on the face, but for the most part, you know, like the, all the action is right there. So anyways, this is the, uh, the video. Uh, coming up on how this scene was created, and uh, thanks as always for tuning in. I hope you enjoy the video, um, should you should you sit through and watch it. <laughs> thanks. Hello and welcome to Stampscaping 101. Um, I'm going to play around with a few stamps today um, from a couple other companies. This one's by Gumbo Graphics. It's a sun with a face on it, an old engraving. I don't know if it's 19th century or something like that. Good with graphics, I'm not sure who has the line now, but um, I think these images are still around, but I've seen this face in other lines as well. And this one by Onion Arts, who I believe was... I believe it was the same company as Imaginaire, who used to do a bunch of real detailed uh, uh, accurate uh, drawings and designs of different type of aircraft, but um, I'm not sure if they're around anymore or whatnot, but um, I don't know, it's always been one of my favorite designs. Again, I, I think this one's clip art, so you might be able to find it somewhere else. Those types of images, though, it's, it's getting harder and harder to find them, um, but there used to be a lot of companies that were kind of focused around a lot of uh, really interesting uh, tight engravings. This is a half page um, card stock, glossy, and it's eight and a half by five and a half, another kind of large um, uh, format here, but um, I wanted to get a few designs in here, so I'm gonna have to work a little bit large. Okay, um, let's see here. My black pad. The concept be behind this one is I wanted to draw this figure and uh, I want him to be kind of submerged in water, kind of halfway. And I was thinking about this hand right here and those little fingers, and I thought it'd be kind of cool to have just those fingers just kind of touching the water with those ripples, you know, and have that kind of a 
you know, kind of a focal point. I don't know, just these fingers just touching the water. And I needed to do something, of course, for the sky, so, you know. Keeping things with that kind of, um, I don't know. I don't know if I call it weird, but uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, that subject, that theme, or the, the spirit of it, I guess you can say. Okay. All these blocks are kind of cool. This is a one inch block there, um, which a lot of companies used to use. I'm not sure who uses those one inch ones anymore. Okay, and this is a moon by uh, Stampscapes, and uh, it's, called, it's called Full Moon Large. Um, I did this design a long time ago, and I drew all those little dots that tone around it. Because the theory was that if I want a moon to stand out, I want to have the area around it darker, okay? So I put in this tone around there to give people a head start so they wouldn't have to go right up to the moon. Um, but what I am going to do is I am going to kind of blot off the edge of the stamp with a dry paper towel just so that the edge of the stamp kind of fades out a little bit. Um, I think I'm going to have that little crater there kind of facing in towards the sun. Okay, just nice light even pressure, you don't want to rock it. Okay, and re-ink. Uh, I'm going to stamp it on the other side as well. Just really blot off the edge, again dry paper towel so that it stamps out lighter. Go for another impression. I always love uh, antique maps and especially kind of celestial maps, you know. And uh, kind of just the whole spirit of it and cartography and the mapping of oceans and they always kind of draw, I don't know, like sea creatures, you know devouring ships and whatnot, you know, gigantic squid and whatnot, gigantic fish, you know, coming out of like representing a whale or what, something like that, but that always kind of intrigued me. Um, all right, let's see here. Okay, I was going to go for another kind of smaller moon up top. Uh, what's going through my head right now is just kind of wondering if I should do it in a different color. Oh, let's just keep it black and see what that comes out looking like. Okay, I'm gonna kind of blot off the edge on this one too. Kind of to keep in the spirit of uh, um, keeping the spirit of what I did on the first two uh, moons. I'm probably overlapping those rays a little bit from that sun, but not to worry because, you know, the bottom of this kind of just tapers out in terms of the uh, um, dot pattern. Okay. All right, now everything looks very um, fragmented in terms of uh, continuity, but when you bring all this texture and tone into that, you know, hopefully it should bring it all together. You know, the, in terms of bringing universal tones in here. Okay, now let's see here. I was gonna use some of this um, cloud space texture. And okay, now I was talking about doing some water, uh, this little figure kind of submerged in water. And my thoughts, I have, things like the Seaside Cove stamp or something like that that I can use. And I have done that in the past, but I wanted this water to look very, very still and almost like he's a figure who's kind of submerged in ink or something like that. So I don't want to have too much texture in there. Um, so the textures in this scene, you know, because I do like texture, uh, I'm going to 
reserved for the sky. You know, I was going to do cloud space. Maybe I'll do this. I mean, this is called mystical water. We're already kind of going kind of whimsical here. Kind of a mysterious look to it. Um, all right. So going back to that water. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to kind of figure out a level or I want the horizon line on this card to be, I figure, the, I figure it'll be submerged in water about like this. Maybe I'll have the horizon like right about right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this piece of paper like about like so, okay? that. And that's going to be my horizon line. Okay. Now, let's go for some texture. I was just thinking right here. Maybe I, maybe I should do another moon here or something. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to leave it like a pyramid, maybe. Of course, a box would look kind of cool, too. Anyway, okay, let's forget about that. Um, all right. Uh, let's go with dark brown for this texture. Let's see if this, this pad seems kind of dry. Some inks. Um, when you go up the stamp, I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about. You know, have these different types of ink colors and whatnot. But sometimes you just can't tell. Sometimes it's super saturated, but it just you can't tell if you inked it up enough. Okay. Now I'm going to. Uh, I'm not worried about being too accurate with this. Okay. I'm not going to be looking to stamp it just boom, right, you know, individually like that over the whole thing. I'm going to just use it as kind of texture here and there. Okay, now to get into some of these more narrow areas, maybe what I'll do is I'll just ink up, you know, a smaller portion of it, like right here, okay? That way I can get into these areas without, you know, stamping over it. I'm kind of I'm kind of stamping it at an angle here and there. Okay, let's ink it up again. It's kind of giving it a kind of an interesting look, I guess. If I didn't mention it, this stamp is uh, Mystical Waters.
when I say it looks good, I'm talking about, you know, in terms of the impressions. Uh, not it looks good in terms of, you know, how the scene looks right now. I mean, the scene looks kind of, kind of weird. Or at least the, uh, all those textures and stuff like that. But, I don't know, as in all cases, I hope it comes together in the end. Okay. Now, I'm going to run some tones into this. I think I'm going to... I was, try, I was trying to decide if I want to stamp this figure right now or not. Now well, let's go ahead and do it. Well, yeah, let's go ahead and do it. I want to know where this figure is going to go. Um, okay, now I have to figure out how far down on the sand do I want the figure to go uh, to be submerged in water? How much of the body do I want submerged? Let's go. Let's go about up to his, up to the figure's waist. What I have is a dry paper towel. I mean a wet paper towel because I want to really remove off um, all of the ink off of the uh, stamp. I think it's like that. Okay, so if I do it a little bit higher than the hand, okay, it means that its hand is kind of behind his body. And if I do it lower, then it looks like the hand is farther up. If I do it even with the hand, then I mean, that's what I'll do. I think I like it even with the hand. Okay, so I'm gonna say something like that. Um, okay, a little bit more. Okay, now I think what I'm gonna do is I don't want it just a straight line. I, I want it to look like where the body is rounded form. So I'm going to slightly take off the ink at a slight angle on the edges, okay? Okay. I like these stamps by this company because uh, <laughs> each blocks, I mean, you talk about kind of uniformity being good, but the craftsmanship that went into these blocks, okay, the body is submerged in the water. They took these blocks, these square blocks, and each one of them is kind of rounded off. I think they used to kind of sand it off on, you know, you're talking about, you know, a 12 edges here, and they're all smooth, so. I used to send them off and hand index them on top. This one's kind of going off the edge a little bit, but you know, because these corners are rounded, so. Um, I don't know where I got this from. I I'm probably bought it at the Carson, uh, California stamp convention back in. It's probably in the mid nineties, I would say. Okay. All right. Now I've gotten this far, and I'm saying to myself, "All right, don't mess it up now." <laughs> in terms of the uh, placement, this is the Ripple's large stamp, and there's just a little concentric. Uh, uh, 
circles there. But I'm only going to use the bottom one, because of that big one. So I just kind of inked it up from, you know, there to there. And let's see, dabbed off some of the uh, ink. Okay, it's there. And no, I'm not going to stamp position it. Just gonna eyeball it wherever it goes. That's fine, good. Perfect. And I know it all along, right? <laughs> not really. But uh, now I look at that, that finger is like sticking down. Maybe that would have been the better one to do. Like, no. No, I don't, I don't want two, I don't want two um, ripples on both sides. It'd be too, it'd be too symmetrical. This is symmetrical up top, but I want there to be kind of a uneven symmetry down there. All right, now, um, let's see, let's start on with some color. Now, I, on the last lesson that I did, uh, whatever number that was, I did it through kind of a, a I don't know, the, the spirit at least of a sepia tone print, you know. And uh, I thought I'd work in the same color scheme, but I want to show kind of a twist on that. You can take this and, you know, you can run some pinks in it or something like that. And I, I've always liked that color combination. There's a lot of colors that you can add with this, um, these brown tones right here. And they, there's a harmony to it, you know, with that kind of that bass uh, that I really like. And I thought we'd do it here, try it here. Um, okay, I want to start off with the Peach Bellini Adirondack Light. And, you know, later on in this video, I'll show you how, um, you know, how we bring, a, you know, a horizon line. Um, into the scene, you know, it's not just going to look like that. Okay. All right, now here's the thing in this one. Um, the thing that I'm going for is I mean, this is a sun and there's all these sky figures and they would, in theory, I don't know, not that we're looking to going for realism here, but in theory, they'd be kind of the illuminating source in the sky, right? But I want this scene to be fairly dark and let's see if I can kind of bring you know, the viewer's attention down to that little, those little ripples there. Okay. So, kind of a dark, I don't know. Well, I guess there's moons there, so who knows if it would be able to be dark, but. Um, I don't know, there is a sun. I don't know. And kind of more of a doing this in the spirit of a, an antique celestial guide or chart. Okay, now I've covered and I've coated and saturated my page a little bit at uh, Peach Bellini switch up to the pale orange. Okay, the pale orange is just a little bit darker. Of course, I have the peach bellini still in here too, but it's just incrementally darker. Now remember, if you're kind of going for this amount of color application, one of the things that I'd really recommend not skipping is that first color. Okay, it, it just 
really makes it a lot easier uh, to apply your colors if you have that uh, that base coat of not only a light color but it's it's a slippery color and I've mentioned this before and I'll say it in practically every video but um, colors like from um, Ranger and uh, that's like the uh, the whole Adirondacks line and the uh, Distress Inks. Those ones are nice and thick and kind of slippery. It's a really great um, brand, I guess, you know, to, to lay down first. And if the lighter the better, you know, because I think it's easier to build up from light to dark. And the colors just become the surface becomes richer as a result, but um, but it's a really good one to start off with. And if you're watching these videos for the first time, you know it's because you know when you move into these other brands of inks or something like that, like rain, uh, this one's Marvy. If I put a big blob like that, it just really spreads out really nicely. Okay, and that's because that first layer, that first all important layer. Okay. I'll, I'll put some color over the front of this moon, but maybe on the side of the moon facing the, you know, that light source of the sun. Maybe I'll kind of leave it a little bit lighter. All right. Um, the darker you take your perimeter, the brighter the light source will seem, or whatever, it doesn't have to be the light source actually, just whatever the lightest areas in your scene are, uh, those will stand out much, uh, much more so, because you're really not working with light, you're working with contrast, right? You know, when you're working just on a white piece of paper. ripples. I do want to put some color over them, or some value and tone. But maybe I'll leave the center as is. Now I can always go into that center area and you know, I can kind of lighten it up with the use of a you know, white gel pen or something like that, and I'm sure I will. But um, Um, if you don't want to have to just completely rely on the, the white shell pen, then just try to leave it light to begin with. Or a little bit lighter, I guess you should say. Or I should say. This card is going to go out for my, uh, my scenic stamping exchange too. I have so many of these to kind of catch up on. Um, but I've mentioned in videos before uh, in my scenic stamping swab. I like to use uh, stamps from other companies. You know, it kind of gives me an excuse to dip into my own you know, private collection of uh, stamps that I've collected over the years. I was just looking at, uh, on the internet, I was trying to find, see if anyone's posted uh, any photographs of the old Stamp of Arbor store, but they used to have categories, just big shelves of everything, you know, and 
celestial and it, you'd see faces and you'd go into the body parts and there'd be figures like this or eyeballs and noses and I don't know every pointing hand and figure you can you know think of brown is the same. Uh, by the way, that previous one, brown, was just straight brown. Uh, the brown that I'm working with now is the number 18 dark brown Marvy, and uh, it's the same dark brown that I stamped out um, the mystical water in. And you don't see, again, Going back to that point about that first coat of ink, you don't see a whole lot of it anymore. You don't see a whole lot of uh, Peach Bellini, at least uh, you know, up front and center, but I do believe it's the thing that's giving this card a nice color glow. Um, let's see here. All right, this is, let me see. This is just a, a straight dark brown right here, okay? And that's what I'm laying down on top of this, these colors right here, okay? And let's see if the camera can pick this up, but that's just straight brown right there. Okay, and that's this brown, okay? That's all that peach bellini and light, uh, the lighter brown, the dark brown on top. But look how much more rich and full and deep this one looks than this one, okay? So that's why I don't try to get just this color right off the bat, okay? It's just you know, the scene glows and it benefits from all those layers underneath the top one. So, you know, the peach bellini and that lighter brown really helps. So it's never a lost thing, uh, you know, a lost color. But, uh, you know, it'll give a richness and, and depth to your, uh, to your end result. Back to the dark brown. I'm kind of streaking right across this figure. You know, there are these little... It's like the... Uh, what is it? I don't know what that is. It's like the... Arterial... I don't know, diagram of, you know, anatomical view of the human body or the electrical system, I don't know, whatever. Veins, but... You know that are light, but the figure in itself is, you know what I mean. It's it's very dark, so um, I'm not really worried about going over it and kind of masking it off. I figure it, it's bold enough and can kind of stand up to, uh, you know, this layering of uh, tone right over the top of it. Okay, 
Now I haven't forgotten about that uh, that uh, red or that pinkish color, um, but I'll get to that. All right, now let's see if I can do something here. Let's kind of create a little bit more of a shadow right around the base of this figure. You know, shadows can be very effective. Yeah, that's something that's um, kind of, in my opinion, underutilized in just about any kind of stamping. You know, that Adirondack lights color that used to be called seashells, but they called those shadow stamping inks. You know, you can take a, a word stamp and stamp it out on a white piece of paper. And then you can take, you know, uh, one of those light tones and then just repeat it, you know, and that would be a very light version. And it would be so light that it wouldn't obscure, you know, the word stamp or, or whatever stamp that you were creating a shadow for. But that was the concept of those ones. They were shadow stamping inks, and uh, you know they can really give a dimension to uh, you know to you know whatever imagery you were working with. Not just you know it wasn't scenic stamping imagery or something like that that they were doing. Uh, you know conceiving that for. But I don't know. Sometimes, in some ways, I think. Sometimes I feel like the, that shadow stamping aspect uh, has kind of been lost. You know, you can really give it a different feel uh, to, like I said, uh, like word stamps. You know, they can, you know, that dimension where they're looks like they're popping off the page is kind of really nice. Uh, but anyways, that you know, I created this little shadow just by you know kind of rubbing down here. So yeah, I should create a little bit more uh, density maybe at the base here. Kind of streak it out a little bit too. Don't just create a, you know, two. And you see I'm streaking the colors in this way, so I'm keeping the shadow in the same spirit um, in terms of my movement with the, uh, you know, the, I don't know, kind of the brushing effect. And, you know, in this case it's whatever stamping uh, sponging effect okay okay could use a little bit more tone around the edge okay I'm looking at this now and it doesn't look too bad as far as like having sky and you know kind of a area where sky meets land or, or water, but I do want to go in and add some, uh, uh, create a horizon line. So I'm going to fold this piece of paper in half you know, to kind of create a crisp edge. And let's go right in here. And there but let's go up a little bit more. I'm doing this so if I just kind of hold this down like that you know this can think and kind of change so I'm putting this here and I'm putting this piece of paper so it fits right there and won't go anywhere you see it's not going to go anywhere and this is going to be the you know the horizon line uh, here. Okay so let's go back and add a little bit more uh, the dark brown. Sometimes you can kind of create a a darker sky and a lighter ground. This in this case, I'm going to kind of do more of a, a darker water and a lighter sky. You know, in terms of uh, differentiating the uh, uh, the two regions. Now, this is just dark brown now. Okay, let's kind of see what's going on here. 
that line down there. Inevitably, it kind of, it creates too harsh of a division. And what I usually end up doing is going, you know, I'll go back and I'll kind of smooth things out a little bit, but oops, let's see. start your strokes from the outside edge. Uh, I don't know about always, but usually, you know. Again, you don't want to start it right here. Even though you can just kind of smooth it out, again, you don't want to get, you know, a big shape like that sitting in the middle of your scene. You can smooth it out, though, you know, especially if you use the uh, that thicker ink initial color, but uh, kind of you watch that, you know. darkening of the uh, corners. my horizon line. Like, you know, I think it's like a like a C or something like that. Okay, but now I do have to make my um, shadow a little bit darker because I made the uh, perimeter so much darker. And this really isn't reading too much as a shadow anymore, so let's go back in with the black. light sources in the distance there, so the shadow would be coming, you know, this way, in back of the figure. I have yet to front light anything, I think. It's always kind of backlit, you know. division, like I said, between the bottom and the top, so let's go in and add some of this black, yeah, especially to the four corners and the edge. Um, the edge will, the darker edge will, you know, create a containment of the composition. Um, it'll create continuity, hopefully. You know, it's, it's basically, you know, the framing concept, you know, we are framing off uh, the imagery. 
and the images were all, remember, stamped in, in black, you know, in terms of the main subject matter. Um, so that's the, kind of the color that you want to use in the end. And I'm making this, even for me, this scene is really dark and uh, kind of moody. I don't really have anything too bright in here. But again, that's kind of the spirit of it. I wanted it to kind of be a you know, very quiet and still scene. Um, And you can do that with lighting as well, you know. I mean, during the daytime, you know, I don't know, whatever, the molecules are moving really fast. This is supposed to be kind of a cooler scene. All right, now, um, let's try some different tones in here. Let's just change, not change, but alter this color scheme a bit. All right. We have those brown warm tones in here. I mean, you know, for the most part, it'll remain that, but um, let's try to bring in some pinks here. You know, I think that kind of became one of the decorating uh, kind of themes, you know, a lot, where you saw a lot of brown, eh, card making too, you know, where you saw a lot of brown tones and stuff, you know, a little bit of pink or, you know, the kind of the pastels, you know, it, you know, it creates, creates a nice kind of harmony, right? And uh, now in this case, I mean, we're not going to do it like side by side, but um, it'll be layered right into it. And uh, I'm trying to find, I should have cleaned my, I, I should always clean my tips before I start this, but, but I don't always do that. Okay. This is a Rosemary number 59 pink. Okay. I'm starting in the darker area because it's not really going to show, but when I start pulling it into this area, um, you know, I'll see what, you know, what effect it's having, okay? I like to do it like that, I, you know, I hardly ever do anything where it's, you know, kind of this totally spontaneous, uh, kind of bold, you know, movement, like just taking it right in there or something like that. I like to kind of add it in gradually. Okay, now, can you see that? The difference between there and down there, it's quite different, don't you think? I mean, it's really starting to glow up there a lot more. And that's where the pink has been used. You can tell right here I haven't used it yet. But that's what it looks like. It doesn't look like that. You know, like that, you know, that hot pink uh, look. But, you know, because I'm putting it over the top of brown. Okay, let me see if I can. Remember to keep, every time I zoom in, I always, at some point in time, I kind of forget to keep the uh, film in the field, the field of view. I'll try to remember that. Okay. And 
where this pink comes into areas that don't have a lot of color. You know, it does read as pink. Wait, can you see that? You know, hopefully this is picking it up. This camera's picking up a massive moire right here. Effect. Okay, let's lay down some of this in the water. this before but it's kind of a I don't know reasonably good point is when do you move, know to move on to your next color okay well if it's a fairly prominent color being used in the scene uh, not just some isolated little coloring of something but you know like layering you know a lot of color down on the card it's when it just simply, when you're working with a certain color, you know, at some point in time, it's just, it's not gonna, there's no further benefit from using that color um, because it's not gonna get any darker or more full using that existing color. That's when you need to move on to your next one. You know, if there's any, if there are any questions about that. Okay, now this pink right here is really quite bright. It's just the number nine pink, okay? It's like that, okay? Let's give it a try in here. Okay, well, you can really see that. Oh, I don't know. I can, looking at my camera uh, screen in the back, but. Okay, but see, I kind of, altering the color scheme. And I didn't start off with, you know, something super dark, you know, and bright like that. I started with something pale, just like I did with the first color scheme. Um, and that's generally what I'd recommend, you know, try something out, see if you like it. I haven't done this, uh, I haven't done this color scheme I don't know. I don't think recently, but uh, yeah, I kind of like it. And it doesn't. If you're doing a card or something like that, if you don't want to go all kind of monochromatic like this, you know, I mean, you can do this color scheme in isolated areas. You know, you can do it in the sky and have something different underneath. You know, uh, or something like that. But again, it's the same concept, you know, in terms of, you know, the layering of ink. Uh, and going back to the initial, um, whatever, concept of this scene. I mean, you can see that little area down there is really kind of standing out. I've taken the area around it and made it quite dark. But anyways, you can see that pink in here. And uh, looking at this um, screen here on my camera, it's the the original here is quite a bit darker than what's showing. I just turn up the uh, the lighting on this so much um, because I have this white paper down here and the. Uh, exposure composition makes it so dark so I have to kind of jack it up but when my scene starts getting really dark um, I don't think I can change that exposure compensation to make it lighter but the scene is a little bit darker uh, than what you're probably seeing okay just to get a little foreground in here I was thinking about adding this branch you know to bring the viewers attention in here a little bit more And let's do that in black. Uh, 
uh, this is prickly branches. Uh, be a stamp. Uh, okay, let's see. In my, I don't know. Did I just recently use that? I might have. What just occurred to me is that the, my face detection on the camera is detecting that as a face. ripples so Go with a submerged tree in the background there, further back. Um, just checking to see if I had it right here on the desk. I don't. Let me go get that. Okay, this is the tree, and I'll just have it kind of poking out of the water in the distance. Maybe again, just like the figure, it'll be kind of submerged. So. Okay, I think it's right around here or so. Just something in the distance there for kicks. I have this little figure here from Edward Gorey that I stamped in a scene recently. I thought about having it, but I think it'd be too distracting. something with that shell pen, but I'm not quite sure what. Maybe I can do it with the... Uh, there's some other type of color, but... Let's bring a little bit of detailing down here. Uh, right around these ripples. Just kind of following the design. seen my videos it um, I tend to use this pen a lot uh, some people might consider it overuse and, and that would be fine but um, I think in this one I don't want to I really want I don't know for some reason you know that oh, I want that you know tension to be right, right down there um, I don't know. It it could use a couple things up there, but maybe uh, I'll do that later. 
Um, okay, let's see. I want to go for a really light shade of something. What's the pink that I used in there? Okay, let's kind of add some shadows. It's not necessarily like eye shadow or something like that that I want to do down here, but kind of that the if the lighting is kind of uh, pinkish, you know, then you know the shadows would kind of follow suit. Okay, these are um, alcohol pens. This is a Marvy Le Plume Permanent. Sent to me by a client in Japan. Uh, thank you, by the way. These are pretty awesome. Uh, I never did get around to getting Copics, but uh, I was going to, but uh, they sent me these. And... Okay, let me see. What I'm doing is I'm just hitting the, uh, the shadows in here. And the pens that I'm going with are, are very light. It's like a, you know, just some, kind of like a, a light tint. Actually, uh, doing that on the face down there, maybe I should do it, um, doing the water as well, like right around that ripple. If I have some sort of highlights down here, then yeah, stands to reason that there'd be some shadows, so why don't I reiterate again kind of what's going on in the design. Okay, let's go back to that white gel pen. See this little, like the living waters or something like that. Yeah, and uh, there's this light area right there, and maybe it's going into the, uh, you know, the body here, and kind of following up. Uh, into this. Uh, spinal column into the brain okay let me see if I can shadow what I was talking about here okay so I put a few little highlights here and there okay sparkle in its eyes. Okay. I don't know, you can't tell me what I did there, probably. And, all right. And this is another area that I tend to do. Well, really all the time, but again, this one's going to be a much more isolated use of the color box pigment ink. Okay. Right around the finger, like, you know, it's like a living source, you know.
illumination happening now. Uh, I can dab some of it off. I do want that finger to show a little bit more. Maybe one of the fingers off. Kind of, you know, put a stronger glow on. And maybe, you know, a couple areas of the spine. You know, I have done this over stars before, but. Maybe I'll kind of create a little bit of a glow going up that spine there. And maybe on the hand, again, to reiterate this idea of a. Uh, you know, kind of life or whatnot. resisting the temptation of putting a little bit of highlighting on those reeds down there. It's very uncharacteristic of me, but I think it would serve the, uh, you know, the, uh, the theme of this scene, you know, to not do that. Um, okay, there's the moon there. Okay, and I think that's the scene right there. Um, I'm pretty sure the, uh, the name of the scene is going to be The Living Waters. Alright, so, kind of a fun scene. Not very textural, but I didn't want it to be, uh, you know down to the water, wanted it very still, and I think I got the, uh, when I was going out in that little finger there, so, uh, thanks for watching the video, and I hope you enjoyed it.